Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Kata and today I am going to be talking about Ascension triggers. Triggers that are going to set us off in many different ways and not only us but set a lot of people off as well around us. Um, so just know that um, we are going to be tested. We are all being tested at this time um, and throughout your Ascension process. Um, especially as it accelerates, as your ascension process accelerates, meaning that meaning that your vibration is is moving higher and higher up the spiritual evolutionary ladder, if we want to call it that, um, the more you're going to find that you and others around you um, will be getting triggered with different things, um, particularly people around you, though. So if you're an individual who is naturally a higher vibration and you have noticed this this is something that's come to your awareness you you notice the, the friends or the family or the people that are around you um, and you you feel that difference between yourself and them and that by that difference I mean you can recognize how unconscious they are with with particular things or perhaps with a lot of things or with all of life itself Right, we can always notice people that are more unconscious because of how they speak, how they act, um, how they behave, how they respond to things or react to things, um, based on the content they watch. Based on you know, there's so many different things, so many different markers that will show us basically where someone is in their ascension process or how conscious or unconscious they are the more you're into like low vibe shows and the more you're into like the horror and the dark shit and the more you're into um um you know like these these criminal shows and like uh oh what else i want to use for example like just like the more you're into watching like really low vibe stupid shit basically the more <laughs> that indicates that you're not at a high vibration you're not feeling aligned and you're not aligned with a higher vibration you're choosing to stay in a lower state you're choosing to stay um basically in a lower vibration and that choice is usually coming from again, an unconscious place. It comes from a lack of awareness. Um, it comes from you not understanding or not realizing, or perhaps the people around you not realizing that what they're doing is highly unconscious and that it's actually hurting their energy field. It's actually hurting, you know, other people's energy field around them. So just know that this is a time of highly, highly accelerated energy. I can really feel it. I can really sense it. Within my being, I'm noticing that people around me are getting triggered like crazy. I actually myself was really, really triggered earlier today um, through having a conversation with my baby daddy. You know, we've been separated for nine years and yet <laughs> there's still a certain amount of uh, domination and control and manipulation that he tries to exert over me. And, you know, when I stand up and, and I'm assertive and I, and I push back and I don't allow it, that really sets him off. You know, I can really sense his feeling of lack of control over me when I take my power back. So, but I don't want to get into my, um, kind of situation this morning too much. I want to focus more on the notes I've made here for you guys about this whole, uh, Ascension triggers. And basically this is everything that I, uh, got awareness about and I also realized in the process of me getting triggered this morning and him also getting triggered um, so um, this is just kind of like everything I channeled and everything that kind of came down for me so old lessons return with people from our past so don't get triggered but if you do get triggered because there's going to be situations coming back around again things that the universe feels they need to test you on to really solidify a certain lesson, to really drive it home within you, right? Do you still get triggered? Do you still allow people to, <clears throat> excuse me, talk to you in a way that is um, disrespectful or, or you know, down talking? Like, are these things that, that you're still allowing, right? And that's why these tests come. They don't come to to just challenge you for fun. They come to challenge you so that you can have the awareness and recognize within yourself, first of all, how you show up and how you respond to the trigger itself. 
and second of all, to help you realize and see clearly where that other individual is at vibrationally, where they're at mentally, spiritually, within their heart and mind, uh, where they're at emotionally. And the only way that we're going to see that is through contrast, right, is through them repeating certain patterns and certain behaviors uh, with us so that we can get um, that awareness and realize what is actually happening and why they're behaving towards us that way. And it's also about realizing like what within me is still attracting this, what within me still needs clarification, what within me still needs um, modification and and a rerouting how can I possibly not get triggered right because that's ultimately the question is how do you not get triggered and we'll get to that in a moment now if you do get triggered by someone um, then the number one thing that I'm going to recommend for you to do is go outside immediately and ground yourself you have to ground your energy I was so upset this morning that I was like literally shaking um, so I really, really, and, and that shaking happens because you lose a ton of energy when you get upset, when you get stressed, when you get angry at someone, when you feel, um, injustice is happening, when you feel like something is really unfair, then we, we lose a lot of power in that moment, um, because we feel victimized, right? And it's not to say I'm not a victim, but I felt victimized in a way, right? And that feeling of victimization and that feeling of it, of being attacked, especially for no reason, um, really, really took a lot of power, a lot of my energy. And so I, that's why I was shaking and I was just really, really upset. Like within my whole entire being was just like messed up from that conversation. So, you know, and thank goodness I was actually outside when I had that conversation. So I grounded myself immediately. I went and I found a tree to hug and I hugged that tree. I swear to God for like 10, 15 minutes probably because I just, I needed that nurturing and I really just needed to ground and flush that energy out of my system because I didn't want to bring it back home with me. You know, I was in the forest. I was, I was on a hike actually when I received this this upsetting phone call and I didn't want to bring that energy back with me because I went to the forest to to decompress and to ground my energy in the first place right but I found it to be extremely helpful that I was actually in the forest when this happened because immediately I had access to trees and I had access to just nature and it was quiet and it was peaceful and absolutely beautiful and it really helped me come back down very very quickly as opposed to before where in the past I would you know probably think about it and replay what he said and what I said and what I wanted to say and what I should have said, um, you know, 400 times and in, in my mind, and I probably would have drawn that out over even days. Um, I, there's been times in the past where when I got triggered, I was so triggered that I was triggered for, for hours. And if not hours, then sometimes it went on for literally days and even weeks and months at times, you know, where you just kind of keep replaying scenarios in your mind. And just like coulda, shoulda, woulda, like doing that kind of thing in your mind, that that's what I'm talking about. So, and this time I didn't, I didn't go there. I didn't allow it. Um, I, I was able to calm myself down, honest to God, like within a, a matter of a couple of hours, like, which is amazing where before, like I said, I would have hung on to it for days and I would have been upset and, and felt extremely victimized for days. So, um, like I said, get grounded if it happens. Um, and basically the, the sooner you can get outside and the sooner that you can ground your energy, uh, the sooner you're basically what you're doing is preventing it from seeping into your mind and for, from seeping into your cells. That low vibe energy, that those low vibrational thoughts and those low vibrational feelings, the less they linger within you, the faster um, you can shift back to your normal self, the faster you can shift back into alignment with your own vortex, with your own, um, you know, stable, uh, like center energy center, right? So don't let things, um, keep replaying in your mind because I find when I allow that, it really, it really keeps it going. And it, it um, it just like, it gradually like lowers my vibration more and more and more. And it really takes me off my axis. So, and we don't want that, right? Because the more you're off your axis, the worse you're going to feel. And then the more you're going to project that, those bad feelings onto other people as well. Now, as your vibration goes higher, this is something that was a very, very clear message I got this morning. As our vibration goes higher through the ascension process, 
the the people that are in our lives, um, friends, family, uh, co-workers, literally acquaintances, like literally anybody that is in your life, those people are going to feel this and they're going to sense this energetically. If they're highly unconscious people, they're not going to know what the heck they're sensing. They're just going to feel a shift and this shift usually will irritate people. And it irritates people, especially people that are, like I said, at a lower vibrational state than you. Uh, once we make a conscious choice to elevate ourselves, elevate our minds and our entire beings, and once we start to take action steps to actually uh, keep ourselves elevated and to push ourselves up and to keep ourselves up, um, the people that are in our lives are are really going to sense that. And some people are going to be super proud of you and super happy for you, you know, that you're making changes and that you're um, paying attention to like your personal needs and whatnot. And other people are going to feel extremely uncomfortable. And the reason why um, those people are going to feel uncomfortable is because um, what we're doing with our higher vibration is we're, we're triggering feelings within them that they're not at that level or that they're not at the right vibration because everyone knows um, subconsciously like kind of where they're at, right? When you look out into the world and when you look at just anyone really outside of yourself, right? What we tend to do is we compare ourselves, right? This is a natural human thing that the brain does is we, we compare ourselves to other people and we're doing this actually subconsciously in, in most cases, not even necessarily consciously. Now, if, if there's a subconscious program of comparing yourself to other people and seeing, you know, where they're at and then seeing where you're at and you don't feel good about where you're at, if they're in a good place, you're going to feel even worse about where you're at. Right. And that in itself is a trigger for a lot of people. So, just them seeing you do well or them seeing you happy or them seeing you um, prosper or, or start to have abundance in your life or just in general being happy will really irritate other people that are not in that vibrational state. Because what we do is, is since we're all connected and since we're all truly one and since we're all swimming in the same energetic soup, <laughs> we're all connected energetically and so we're all pulling on each other and we're all constantly feeling that pull within ourselves that we should do better, that we should try harder, that we should um, put more effort into self-care, put more effort into fixing our lives, particularly fixing the things that are not working in our lives. And when that pulling starts to happen and the more that, that certain people are doing the work, other people who are not doing the work are going to feel that and they're, they're going to be so bothered by that because they know and they will feel innately within their heart and within their soul that they should be doing the work, but they're not doing it. And that not doing the work is going to build so much like resentment and low vibrational feelings towards the people that are doing the work because they know darn well that they should be doing those same things, but they're not doing them for whatever reasons. And usually the reasons don't matter because those reasons are always based on choice. At the end of the day, everything comes down to choice. Now, um, and, and actually regardless of the level of consciousness, uh, within people. So as your vibe goes higher, people in your life will feel that regardless of their level of consciousness. And this will really irritate people who are at a lower vib vibration than you because it triggers those feelings, like I said, within them that they're not at that level or they're not at a level um, that they could be at. Now, these triggers show up in a lot of different ways, like I said. One of the biggest ways I'm noticing is jealousy or envy. That's a big, big, big collective theme that I'm feeling right now. There are a lot of people out there that are feeling very jealous or very envious of people that are successful, people that are doing well. And this is absolutely obviously silly and ridiculous because if you want to do well in your life, you're going to have to make some changes to do well, right? Um, but most people are not willing to make those changes. They want to keep living their comfort zone life while expecting changes to happen externally, right? And for things to just kind of come into their life. And then they compare their lives to the people uh, that are successful, that are doing well. 
so jealousy and envy is is definitely one way of how this trigger may show up for you from other people that you know and, and you're gonna find that some people are jealous of you and envious of you and um it doesn't matter how much they try to sh like hide that it's going to show through uh you're gonna pick up on it and you're going to see it so just be mindful of that resentment is another one huge huge one uh feelings of resentment towards you from other people again when you start to ascend and when you're really like climbing the ladder people that are not climbing the ladder are going to resent you for that um and they're going to project that resentment onto you through different ways right and that resentment can come through with all kinds of nasty things that they say to you or or whatever um anger and frustration towards you is also another thing that uh, you may experience you know as you're um, moving up the ladder lashing out either verbally emotionally or physically even um, hopefully not physically but um, definitely people lashing out and just you know you'll recognize that they're getting triggered and they're just saying things to you that are completely unfounded or completely unfair or um completely uncompromising or un unrealistic uh so again be mindful if people are lashing out towards you verbally and emotionally or just saying things to you that you know is not true or that you think is not fair then know and just understand that that's why they're doing it because your your ascension is irritating them because they're not doing the work rubbing things in your face that's another one i experienced that one this morning actually i've experienced all of these so far this morning and this is exactly what i was feeling from my baby daddy um because the conversation we were having was displaying that exactly like i felt this 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 energy of like jealousy and envy coming through because i'm living my truth and because i'm choosing to to walk down a new career path you know that is more fulfilling and more um serving and more in alignment with me where he is not and he's staying stuck in a job that he no longer enjoys doing you know and and i know that there's jealousy coming from him towards me because of that and then the resentment you know the resentment was coming through that even though we've been separated for nine years he still resents me that i never went back to him you know even though he made some pathetic attempts in the past to reconcile with me and I, I I chose not to reconcile with him because I knew and I could clearly see that we were not on the same level and I told him that and I explained that to him in many different kind ways um, but he he's not there right he's not at that level of consciousness to understand that with his heart he's very much still stuck in his ego state um, and because of that he resents me and he doesn't understand why I never wanted to get back together with him uh, the anger and the frustration that certainly came out this morning you know um with everything that he was saying to me and he was just angry and and frustrated with me because he was actually mostly frustrated with me because he knew that he couldn't control me and he he doesn't have that hold on me anymore he's not able to manipulate me he's not able to coerce me into things like he just he doesn't have control and that lack of control um that he once had over me now that that's gone like it frustrates him and it, it makes him like really angry because that was that was something that made him feel more stable having control over me and control over us over me and my daughter uh rubbing things in your face that was something i did uh this morning as well quite a bit so just bringing up a whole bunch of unfounded um situations uh or examples uh and and like literally trying to like well i do this you know and you don't do the, this or you don't do enough or or whatever right he was <laughs> he was trying to convince me that i don't do enough when i do fucking 90 percent of the work with our daughter but anyway and i'm saying this as an example because if you're a single mom or if you're someone that has you know a difficult person in your life like these are some things that are going to come up and these are some some things that people are going to throw in your face and and um you know even if you don't have kids it could be regarding other stuff so it could be regarding work actually 
uh, narcissistic behavior. That's another one. So blackmailing, gaslighting, all of that. And, and you know, I'm just going to tick that box for this morning's conversation because that kind of went down too. He was definitely being narcissistic. Everything was all about him. And, and I was the bad guy because I dared ask for an extra day for him to take our daughter. So yeah, narcissistic behavior, the gaslighting definitely um, are, you know, triggers that may show up from other people. Uh, threats, comparison, and pettiness. Those were also things that are, you know, um, <laughs> that I actually experienced in our conversation too this morning. So, um, you know, comparing again, like who does what and he does more or so he thinks. Um, you know, just being extremely petty and like childish uh, when it came to, you know, assessing, you know, how we kind of show up for our daughter as we're co-parenting. Um, and then even there was even a little tiny hint of a threat uh, slipped in there regarding the child support that he currently pays, which <laughs> I thought was just like hilarious. I'm like, really? You're threatening me? Um, overstepping personal boundaries. And that was, that was the, the biggest part. So the entire, uh, conversation and the entire situation I had with my ex this morning was, was all about overstepping boundaries. And that's exactly what, um, what I kind of chalked up the whole thing to be. So I understood, like I knew, I knew that that's what he was doing. I understood right away that he was trying to overstep boundaries. He was trying to, um, again, uh, just manipulate and control someone or something or, or more than one person in his life. Cause in this case, it's me and my daughter, um, you know, in ways that work for him, right. That serve his narcissistic needs, um, two faced behavior. So, you know, two faced behavior too, is something to definitely look out for. And I'm going to say, use your intuition on that one because Two-faced behavior is something that you can spot like a fucking mile away if you're really, really aware and if you're paying attention to people's body language and to what they're saying. I find um, I can now really pick up on body language and what they're saying and, and like how it doesn't match between people like or, or with people as I'm uh, talking to them. So if someone is saying one thing but their body language is saying something completely different to me, I can really pick that up. And with that, I know that they're being two-faced in that moment. Um, they're not being honest about how they either truly feel or about what's going on with them for real. Uh, and they're just trying to hide that. So don't fall for that. It's definitely a very, very common and you have to pay attention and be very aware to not miss it. Because see, it's all about how you show up too with, with your ascension process and as you're ascending and as you're going through and as you're doing the work and, and doing the self-care and loving on yourself and, and feeling good within yourself. The more that we do these things, the more you know people that are not doing those things are going to be irritated. The more they're going to try to stay in our lives because they love that energy. They love the high vibe. It's, it's very... Um, like it fills them up, you know, it fills their cup because I want to say it, I always use the cup as, as the uh, emotion, the holder of emotions. So it really fills their cup, right, to be around you and to actually leech off of your energy and become an energy vampire and kind of feed off of your energy. But if you recognize who people truly are for what they truly are, and if you can recognize where somebody's at vibrationally or at what level of consciousness they're at, like I said, based on their behavior, based on their, the friends they have, based on, you know, whether they drink or do drugs, based on um, what they watch and like what they eat and whether they take care of themselves. It's really like so obvious, like glaring in our face obvious of the people that love themselves and take care of themselves and the people that don't. Okay, it's very, very obvious. So the more you can recognize it, the more you're going to avoid uh, getting triggered by those people. And the more you're going to actually avoid um, any triggering situations with those people. Now, how to handle triggering situations is the next part of what I'm going to talk about. Um, so I've got several different suggestions here of how you can deal with uh triggering people or situations, the very, very first thing I'm going to recommend to you, and this is what I did this morning, is breathe. Just breathe. 
take a couple of deep breaths, especially if you just got triggered, especially if somebody just pissed you off or said a bunch of nasty things to you that you know you didn't deserve. Just breathe. Take long, deep breaths and slow yourself down. And go, uh, go outside is the next thing I wrote down. I was going to say go within, yes, um, but uh, go outside immediately, actually. Try to ground your energy immediately because what happens when we get triggered um, and our energy gets kind of thrown off by someone is that we we immediately like get ungrounded, we get off kilter. We get, we get ungrounded um, because we're up in our heads, right, in that moment. As soon as somebody says stupid shit to you, you're in your head and your thoughts are going a mile a minute and you're just kind of like trying to process and trying to like figure out what you're going to say next, right? So if you're, if you're in that mental space and if you're all up in your head, then you're going to become very ungrounded very quickly and you're literally gonna, like not going to feel well. You may even feel sick to your stomach. You might feel a little bit woozy or dizzy in the head. That's an indication actually that you're uh, too much in your head and not uh, within your heart space. Um, so getting grounded is going to be extremely important. If you can have difficult conversations outside, I would actually recommend doing that. Go outside and have those conversations outside because you're automatically grounding yourself. Set the intention to ground yourself as you're having this conversation or before you're about to have the conversation if you have control over the timing of it. For me, thankfully, I was outside already. I was hiking in the woods when I received this phone call. So um, that was really, really helpful. But if you're inside, just try to go outside, go for a walk, you know, get or put your earbuds in or something so that your conversation can be private but but definitely try to have it outside it'll make a huge difference um now the next thing in terms of how to handle triggering situation is remember why the triggering is happening so try to keep in mind when someone approaches you extremely unconscious what does unconscious means what does un unconscious mean it means that they're not in their heart they're not coming from a loving, kind, compassionate, understanding place. They're coming from ego. They're coming from anger. They're coming from their mind. They're coming from all kinds of materialistic things and excuses. They're not coming from a compassionate, kind place. That is how you know someone is at a, in a low vibration or someone is, is extremely unconscious. When you can remember that, you can, it helps you. Like for me, it really, really helped me to return back into my heart space. Once I reminded myself like, Kata, this is no news. Okay. You've been dealing with this guy for the last, you know, over 10 years now, almost 11 years out of that, you've been separated for like nine of them. And he has proven to you time and time again, that he's extremely unconscious. Why do you still allow yourself to get triggered? Why is this even a surprise that he's he's acting like a jerk again? This is what he does because he always comes from his ego. And as soon as he's challenged, as soon as his ego is challenged, he immediately gets triggered and he lashes out. This is what he does. And I'm sure you have people in your life that do something similar. And if you don't, you are blessed and very lucky. Um... So remember why the triggering is happening. It's happening because they're highly unconscious and they're coming from their ego, not from their heart. Um, what, is t what is this teaching me about myself, about my boundaries? Uh, that was something I asked myself right after we hung up um, and ended the conversation. And, and then I, I realized I'm like, I automatically get my back up and I get triggered when my boundaries are crossed. So just know that every single time someone is, like you're getting upset and you're getting triggered, you're getting triggered because your boundaries are being crossed. Now I didn't cross his boundaries. What I did was I crossed his comfort zone and that's what pissed him off because it wasn't a boundary issue. I wasn't disrespectful. And actually we already had a conversation several weeks ago about him taking on an extra day in the schedule. So this had nothing to do with, me being disrespectful or crossing boundaries, it was simply I was making him stretch his comfort, stretch outside of his comfort zone, and that was what he didn't like. What is this teaching me about assertiveness? 
That'll be your next question. When someone triggers you, what is this teaching me about assertiveness? Perhaps maybe I need to be more assertive. Perhaps I need to set clearer boundaries for this individual so that they know, hey, this is the line and you don't get to cross it. Because when you do cross it, I'm not going to respond in a way that you're going to like it. And understandably, right? The next thing I'm going to suggest to do when you get triggered is to stay calm. I know, easier said than done. Trust me, I fucking blew a fuse this morning too. But I reeled it in really, really quickly. Again, because probably because I was out there hugging trees and I was feeling, you know, better and I was grounding my energy. And I consciously chose to release the frustration and the anger towards him. Um, and I consciously chose to go into a state of calm within myself. And as I was sitting actually at the base of this tree, I was actually considering and I was thinking to myself that by me staying calm, that actually means that I'm not giving my power away to him or to the situation. So I reeled, you know, my power back in. I, I pulled it back into myself because initially him triggering me was me giving my power away. But once I realized that I was doing that, I said, you know what? Nah, you ain't going to get the best of me. And I started reeling in my power and I said, no, I'm going to take my personal power back. You don't have power over me like that. And you don't um, trigger me and set me excuse me, set me off like that. And if you do, then I'm only going to allow it to be a very short, very temporary thing. And I'm going to just let it pass through me and move on. But staying calm and bringing yourself back to that state of calm is going to be a power move actually on your part. Count to 10. So this is a reset count. This is something I kind of came up with this morning. So it was like a reset count um, that I got as a message from spirit. So counting to 10, one to 10, and I just like slowly counted to 10. And when I hit 10, I knew that 10 meant that I was now in a completely level, um, uh, calm and collected state of mind. So by the time you reach 10, get into the mental state. So as you start counting and you're pissed and you're brewing right now and your blood's boiling, okay? And then you start one, two, I'm calmer. I'm calmer with each number. Three, I'm getting even calmer. Four, I'm pulling my power back. Five, I'm not allowing this to um, throw me outside of my vortex. Six, I'm already feeling that calmness. Seven, it's already setting in. Eight, I can now feel it in my heart. Nine, I am there. I am calm. Ten, I have reset myself and I'm back to me. That's a reset count. Very powerful. Super simple. Very, very powerful. I would give that a try. It worked really well for me this morning. And the reason why a ten is a reset point, because in numerology, we always reduce numbers down to a single digit, right? No matter how many numbers there are, you add them all up and then you keep adding them together until you get one single digit. So I, you know, one plus zero equals one, right? And one is the start of new beginnings of a fresh start, right? So that's that re, uh, reset calming and collecting um, number. So the next point is walk away or let the person know that you are ending the conversation if they are, um, and if they are calm or willing to be respectful, then you can pick it up another time. So this was something I said to my ex this morning, although he didn't really appreciate it all that much, but I said, you know what? Uh, if, if this is how this conversation is going to go, I'm hanging up and let's revisit it when we're both calm. Uh, he wasn't really having that, so it didn't kind of go that way, but I did manage to calm things down enough with him that we were able to still get to a place where we finished the conversation. And it was because I didn't allow it to continue basically, but we finished the conversation and we both said goodbye. So there was no hanging up on each other. There was no disrespect in that way, but I did let him know that, you know what, this is where we're going to end this. Cause I'm not going to just keep fighting with you. So Walking away sometimes it's, is the best thing, especially if you're in person having a, a disagreement or an argument with somebody or a conversation with somebody and it's going south real fast, then just walk away. Just say, you know what? 
I don't think either one of us is in a good mental space right now or emotional space. So I'm just going to go for a walk and calm myself down. Maybe you should do the same. And then when you're calm, then let's talk again or come back again, you know, maybe tomorrow or whatever. Um, now, the last kind of three, I'm just down to the last three points here. So if it's someone that you have to compromise with, like, for example, with me, with my baby daddy, we have to compromise, right? Because we're co-parenting a child, right? We have nothing to do with each other's personal lives. And he's moved on many, many years ago and has been dating somebody else. Um, so at this point, it truly is just co-parenting. But because of that co-parenting, obviously, we have to stay civil and we have to stay, you know, in 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 a good place with within this co-parenting relationship right so if it's someone that you have to compromise with um, prepare for the next conversation by writing down your points to validate your truth and this is something that I've also done in the past with my ex where I've had to write um, kind of like a list of, of points uh, that I knew I needed to bring up in conversation and I knew that I would potentially forget to bring some of those points up in conversation if I was just going to try to have a conversation on the spot with him, right? Especially if he triggers me and I get upset, then I can't think straight. And then I'm definitely not going to be able to bring up those valid points. Um, because when I do bring up valid points, then usually he kind of thankfully has enough awareness that he'll kind of just, you know, check himself a bit and he'll be like, Oh, so, you know, but I need to be in, in a, in a calm state of mind to be able to bring up those, uh, points and and again this is about my truth so it's not about his I just simply present my truth and say well this is how I see things and this is how I feel about things and this is why I need this that or the other thing now if you are dealing with somebody who is not flexible coming to my next point like at all not flexible at all not willing to compromise at all just extremely unconscious extremely asleep has absolutely no desire or no capacity to be in their heart space. They're only in their mind and ego and they want to fight you on everything. In those situations, I'm going to say, cut your losses and walk away for good. Just close the door on that person altogether. There's no point in trying to convince anyone that is absolutely asleep and will not even listen. There's just no point. You're wasting your energy, your breath, your time, your everything. The best thing that you can do for yourself in that moment is truly recognize who you are, recognize your power to to control this situation by walking away. And basically by doing that, you're not allowing any more triggering to happen from this individual. You won't be triggered, he won't be triggered, or they won't be triggered. And, you know, it's a win-win. Somebody always has to be the bigger person. And the very last point uh, here for how to handle triggering situations is don't take on their energy. Cleanse it if you do. So for um, when we have these difficult conversations or when we have these triggering moments with people, what happens is we can form energetic cords with them. And if you don't detach that energetic cord, if you don't cut that cord, that cord will grow over time and it's, and, and what what happens is within that cord, there's information that is traveling. This cord is invisible, you know, but just kind of imagine like a rope around you. Um, and, and then there's like the rope and then there's the other end is, is tied onto somebody else. So that's what a cord of attachment basically is or looks like, um, but it's energetic. So it's not visible to the naked eye. However, it's still there and it still forms. Cords of attachment only form in situations where we are triggered, where really intense uh, lower vibrational feelings are brought to the surface and they are continually fed with our thoughts and with our feelings. And of course, continually fed in the 3D through uh, having conversation and continuing the argument and not giving up the fight. Okay. That's how those things will um, perpetuate. But you can cut these cords of attachment for yourself. You can certainly ground the energy within yourself, like I said, by hugging a tree, sitting at the base of a tree, asking that tree to ground your energy, asking Mother Earth to take all of these lower vibrational energies and transmute them for you. And in the meantime, sending her love and gratitude and respect in exchange for her taking away those lower vibrational feelings. So 
don't take on people's energy and don't allow their energy to penetrate you to the point where it completely throws you off kilter and messes you right up. I've experienced this multiple, multiple times with family members, uh, like I said, with my ex, um, with lots of different, with even some clients in some cases uh, long ago. So this is something that I just don't allow anymore. I have enough awareness and I've grown and I've implemented many of my life lessons to the point where I just don't allow that to happen. If I do feel like something is off within my energy field and I did take on their energy, then I will absolutely take steps to eradicate it to make sure I bring myself back up to a high vibe. And I do that by going into nature first and foremost. It's it's the most healing place of all places. Nature is is the number one healing source. Um, especially when it comes to shifting energy. And then in addition to that, a salt bath is amazing. Four to six cups of Epsom salt in a salt bath. And you just soak yourself for like a good 45 to, to 60 minutes, as long as you, you like. Definitely don't do less than 30 minutes. Otherwise, you're just kind of wasting your time because the, the body needs time to, to like shed and to purge that stuff into the water. Like it needs time to wash that stuff away and it needs time to recalibrate itself. So, you know, 20 minute bath isn't going to do anything, but even a 30 minute, to be honest, does it does something, but it's it's just not very much. 45 minutes to an hour is most definitely more valuable in terms of what you're going to get out of that salt soap. And it's not a bath. You're not bathing in this water. You're simply soaking in it. Once you have soaked in it um, and you feel like you're, you're done with your soak, you drain your bathtub, you stand up, shower off, then use your soap. Now you can use your soap and, and whatever you use, you know, shower off, get yourself nice and clean and smelling good and then step out and then it's a fresh start. So salt baths really, really help to wash away other people's nasty energy. It helps to wash away whatever you may pick up that doesn't belong to you, really anything low vibe, okay? So these are some of the things that you guys can do if you're getting triggered during your ascension process. And just please keep in mind that we're not all ascending at the same speed. We're certainly not all ascending in the same way. Uh, many of us are getting uh, tested like crazy. The ones that are ascending quite a bit, I do see. And like I said, I'm experiencing uh, repeats of lessons coming back in. Just some of these are just kind of like final little tests, you know, to see how you're going to respond. So don't allow yourself to get triggered. If you do get triggered, follow these steps that I, I mentioned or I outlined um, earlier to recalibrate yourself and bring yourself back into your own vortex. Because at the end of the day, what do you want to be? You want to be happy. You want to feel fulfilled. You want to stay on course. You want to keep doing what you're doing that is working for you, that is healing you, that is supporting you and helping you. And you want to keep filling your own cup. That's what we need to do. And that's what we are all responsible to individually do for ourselves to get ourselves into a higher vibrational place so that we can become better human beings so that we can we can become more enlightened beings and we can show up in this world in a significantly more loving and kinder and compassionate way. I hope this message was helpful for you guys today and I really really hope that your ascension journey isn't too difficult and I wish you all the best in all of whatever you have to deal with, whatever you're going through at this very moment. And just know that you are powerful, that you are strong, and that you always have choice. And just know that your choices are what propel you forward or bring you back four or five steps. It's truly up to you. It's truly up to you what you choose and who you choose to allow within your sphere and who you choose to allow to trigger you. That is my message for this October 11th. I wish you guys the best with everything and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. Bye.